Hey Bethel family, it's Angie. And man, is it exciting for me to be here today with four members of Bethel Church who are also executive directors of nonprofits in our community. Hopefully you got to meet some of them yesterday at Local Fest. And uh, they're here today just to give you a little bit expanded version of a podcast, share a little bit about themselves and their um, agencies and what they're doing and how they are impacting the Tri-Cities for good. So I'm gonna have them start today by just introducing themselves, tell you what their nonprofit is and maybe how long they've been in their current role. So we're gonna start over here with Zenon. All right, uh, Zenon Thornton uh, with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. I've been in the director role for eight years here in the Tri-Cities. Um, our mission is to lead every coach and athlete into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and his church. So really at the heart of that is a discipleship ministry using the platform of sports. Awesome. My name is Amanda Lorraine. I'm co-founder and CEO of Grace Kitchen. We are a local nonprofit that offers hope and opportunity for lasting change to women survivors of poverty and exploitation. We do this by fostering a community of grace where women learn job and life skills that enable them to gain sustainable employment and a secure future for themselves and their children. We are a gospel ministry, so we believe that all of scripture should shape all of our lives. So we exist to proclaim the resurrection power of Jesus to a hurting and lost community of women. I'm Trisha McFarlane, and I am the co-founder of Mirror Ministries. We actually started in Bethel Church as a freed ministry, and we launched out almost 10 years ago. Our 10th anniversary is coming up. So Mirror Ministries is ministering to sex trafficking victims and survivors here in our local community. In that almost 10 years, we have helped over 640 mm. people find freedom, hope, and healing from that horrible crime um, and that horrible wound to the soul. So we do that through our local education and outreach, really intentional outreach, looking for people. And our um, outreach center has therapeutic services, intensive case management, survivor support groups where they get to support one another in that healing mm. process and mentors, et cetera, that we get to do. Mm -hmm. And now we're opening, in addition to our outreach center, Esther's Home out mm -hmm. in Pasco, where it is the first restoration home for minor victims of sex trafficking here in Washington State. And we're getting really excited to be able to meet the girls that are gonna be living there with us for the next mm -hmm. couple of years. Yeah, that's awesome. good. And I'm Brian Ace. I'm the CEO with Boys and Girls Clubs of Benton and Franklin Counties. Um, I've been working at clubs for 25-ish years now, um, but in since this role, two. since I was two, that's yes. right, you're so gracious, but in this role for probably just about the last 12 years. So I'm um, kind of unique of the group that's here because we are the only secular nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, so very interesting for me to get to do ministry-based work in a secular setting. Mm -hmm. um, and Boys and Girls Club is a youth service organization to empower all young people, um, especially those who need us most, to reach their full potential. So I get to help help staff and volunteers do that every day. That's excellent. Wow, a lot of good stuff going on here between these four nonprofits. And one of the things I'm interested in is what are some of your spiritual gifts? Because your spiritual gifts, God uses them and works through your gifts in your current role. So I'm just curious, just share a couple of them. Some yeah, so I, I think for me, as I look at some of the top ones, um, that I just have had the ability to exercise over the years is really teaching uh, is being one of those. And I still do that in my job in some way, but still do it at church uh, as well. And then just service, mm -hmm. um, just being willing and able to reach out and serve. Excellent. I'd say my top ones that come out over and over again are administration, uh, leadership, and discernment. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, my top three as well are discernment, teaching, and leadership. Okay. Some similarities wow. here. Yeah. yeah. I had discernment, um, exhortation, and then uh, service as well in that. And I think administration is a part of that too. And I just, I think at the heart, it's just, it's just service. Mm -hmm. Just love serving the community and, um, you know, being kind of a sports enthusiast as well. It really just goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that exhortation part kind of encouraging mm -hmm. our young people and, and really coaches, those that are influential yeah. to, to use their, their position, their influence, whether it's mm -hmm. their, their teammates, whether it's their, the team, um, to use it for Christ. So mm -hmm. I just, it's so good to explore those spiritual gifts and see how we can apply them to these areas that we're called yeah. to. It's so good because I think, you know, God has gifted you in a specific way and it's very clear how he's using those gifts in the agencies that you're mm -hmm. serving in. So um, how transformative is the role of volunteers 
for your success. And so what, I, what I'm interested in is like, as we talk about spiritual gifts, like, can you give an example of maybe a volunteer that's using a spiritual gift as they serve in your um, nonprofit or um, an example of like, hey, here's one we really need as uh, for anybody that's listening out there that that might be something that somebody might jump on. So how about we start with you? Well, volunteers are the heart of the ministry at Grace Kitchen. They help in so many ways. We have groups coming in every week to package our products. Mm. We want to have lots of time for in the classroom with the women we serve so they can they can heal from trauma, they can build their confidence, they can work on their GEDs, study for their driver's licenses. Therefore, we don't want them packaging our products. Mm -hmm. So that's a big way that the volunteers come in and pack thousands mm -hmm. of pounds of artisan pasta and mm -hmm. sauces for us. So that's a wonderful opportunity. We also have mentors that mm -hmm. have gone through a trauma training and walk alongside these women side by side. They're hosting baby showers and move-in parties when they get their own apartment. And then there's just all of the cleaning and organizing and mm -hmm. maintenance of that old 1913 building. Mm. And we're also really looking to build our event team. That is a real need for Grace Kitchen. Awesome. How about so good. Yeah. So many different ways. I mean, the volunteers are essential, right? Like um, we talk about uh, multiplication versus addition, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's a discipleship thing too. But so our, our volunteers really help us multiply um, the ministry, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want to limit it by our own capacity or, or the capacity of any mm -hmm. one person. So um, man, without volunteers, we don't really exist. Um, mm -hmm. And I think some, some cool ways that I've seen volunteers really plug in and use their gifting. Um, teaching is one, kind of the same kind of thing. We're a, a mentorship mm -hmm. um, ministry of sorts. And so mm -hmm. having people with a, a, you know, an aptitude to be able to teach and, and to be comfortable teaching really all ages as we go mm -hmm. from our leagues that are fours and fives up to you know college age and beyond so really there's there's kind of a place for everyone mm -hmm. um, you talked about events events are huge yeah. uh, we have an outreach that's happening soon that will have over 100 volunteers just helping everything from just greeting just being a friendly face mm -hmm. to um, to serving to serving food to um, being the hands hands-on kind of um, mentor to those that have made a decision for Christ um, so really it's when you have a willing person um, this willing and able with a little bit of disposable mm -hmm. time, uh, we can find a place for them. That's mm -hmm. great. Trisha, how about you? Yeah, we like to say do what you love to fight what you hate. So God has mm -hmm. gifted you in certain ways, and that tends to be what you love doing then also. So we have people with the gift of service that come in, and they sneak in and clean our outreach, service, our outreach center for us on a regular basis. And what we would do without them, I can't even imagine. Um, we have people with the gift of hospitality that come in and supply meals for our mm -hmm. classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays or, or the kids' meals for the kids' club. Um, those with the gifts of administration that come in and help with uh, computers or database mm -hmm. stuff, um, stuffing envelopes, whatever it might be. And those also, there's more of those service, so many of the service ones, mm -hmm. right? Helping on Esther's home, it's 20 and a half acres. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of yard work. We have guys that come out, all the people that are out there are retired, right? Mm -hmm. They're old folks. <laughs> Some of us are getting old. No offense, <laughs> I'm right there with you. Um, but they're they're out there mowing the lawns mm -hmm. and, and weeding the gardens and, and helping to maintain the home. Uh, we have people coming out and helping with the horses for the equine care. And ideally, you do have, there's all those little little bits and pieces that um, can be done, you know, maybe helping with an event or something. But also, all of us have those needs for the people that are steady eddies that are coming. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you have to be there every single day. Just like when you were employed or working mm -hmm. somewhere, you are you still have days off. So we know everybody's going to need days off. But for the vulnerable populations we work with, it's really important for them to know that there's somebody who cares and is going to mm -hmm. show up and keep yes. showing up. Mm -hmm. So that's important, yeah. too. It's good. Yeah, and I, I think similar. There, there's opportunities for everybody, volunteerism-wise. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's once a year. Sometimes it's once a day. Mm -hmm. um, that'll kind of change. It can be as simple as coming in and helping kids with homework mm -hmm. at one of our clubs. Or, or maybe it's coming into the office and helping with filing mm -hmm. or newsletter work. Um, it could be special events. I, I think one of the ones that I would lift up as we talk about different ways volunteers can engage is, is really to look at serving as a board member. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's such a critical role. And, you know, although, you know, Boys and Girls Club isn't always looking for new board members, sometimes we are, sometimes we aren't. What I will say is um, as a secular nonprofit and a faith, you know, motivated leader, I'm hungry for 
for people mm -hmm. to pursue board service in a secular organization mm -hmm. from a place of faith. Yeah. And I don't think that um, that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing mm -hmm. uh, to do. And so I, I think that is maybe the pinnacle mm -hmm. of service. It's the most demanding. Mm -hmm. um, it's the most time consuming. There's usually some fundraising expectations involved yeah. for all of us but it's a great way for people that want to dig deep to, to look at serving. Yeah, that's super. So I know you all have a website. If people were interested in serving, can you just tell us quickly your website that they could jump onto? Yeah, ours is tricitieswafca.org. Um, all the information's on there. Yeah. Grace.kitchen, click on volunteers and all of the volunteer opportunities are listed. You can click on the one that suits you best. Super. Mirror, as in, reflections mirror-ministries.org and also there's a serve tab on there so it is a pretty long process to get through because we do work with a very vulnerable population but you learn a lot of amazing things on the way mm -hmm. and greatclubs.org for us and uh, just look at how you can volunteer and follow the instructions excellent so i want to shift gears just a little bit you know um y'all are in the trenches with populations that need help and so sometimes uh, as a leader, you face challenges. So can you think of maybe an example of a time when maybe you were stretched and maybe your faith is what mm -hmm. kind of helped you navigate mm -hmm. through that obstacle? <laughs> it's a little bit harder question. I don't know who wants to go first on that one. We started a capital campaign for $4 million for Esther's Home. Um, the first event we were supposed to have for our major donors was the week that the world shut down mm -hmm. and we were told there would be a two week delay. Just two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, two weeks two and we'll weeks. reschedule. Um, but we kept going through. God made it really clear that this was the time we were supposed to be moving towards this home that had been mm -hmm. a vision all along. And God did it. And in our community, in the midst of COVID and in the midst of all the other traumas and dramas going on, mm -hmm. he raised $4 million towards this capital campaign to wow. purchase this property, get set up for the staff to be in there for um, several years worth of staff costs, all in the midst of all of that, and just showed us who's boss once again. Yeah, that's so, awesome. That's, that's a good, good example. As I was thinking about a time of struggle for me, this last July, August was not my best. Um, a lot of things happened that if it was just one thing, it would have been a bit of a bummer, but it was like five of those things mm. and it just was overwhelming. Mm. You know, and so as you talk about how do you get through that, how does your faith support you through that? I was super lucky because um, in this season, my board president, my the volunteer that I report to um, is a great person of faith and it was so comforting to be able to be authentic, mm. to be real, um, to pray together. Um, that was incredibly meaningful. Mm -hmm. That's so important is mm -hmm. just to ask for help yeah. and rely on other people in those seasons of struggle. Yeah. Yeah. So. You have a great small group too. I do have a great yes. small group. I'm yeah. in it. So. So. <laughs> That's true. It's awesome. Amazing. How about you, Amanda? Well, I think, uh, I think about just my life every day and I think that God's office is at the end of yourself. Mm. And that's where I live. I feel like every day at Grace Kitchen, it's just grown so fast. When we started mm -hmm. Grace Kitchen, we thought we were gonna launch a restaurant, a coffee mm -hmm. shop. Mm -hmm. And little did I know we had to pivot very quickly because we weren't able to get the permits to launch those programs for the women we serve. So we ended up getting the pasta company and that was something that I had never done in my mm -hmm. life to learn to make artisan pasta and then launch the catering program. But through the pandemic, we were able to launch this mm -hmm. successful food processing plant and it's That's been awesome. just a tremendous tool of discipleship for the women we serve and have provided the sanctuary employment for them. And it provides around 25% of our annual operating mm -hmm. budget every year. Incredible. It's great. That's awesome. Yeah, I think something similar to what you've all said, or at least pieces of that. Um, and I, I think a time of challenge came for us with growth and with mm -hmm. opportunity, right? And 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 meeting those needs of of our constituents. And mm -hmm. you know, when uh, when things grow rapidly, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of you know backfill, and you mm -hmm. want to you want to take territory, and you know, and and launch new programs and, and new things. But uh, you can end up being very stretched individually and feel like, man, well, this is up to me to get all this stuff done. And, and it's really not. And so it's, mm -hmm. it's honestly, it's just relying on God and that you can have these big dreams or these big aspirations that are God-sized goals to do these things that you wouldn't right. even imagined. Um, and then you're like, wow, how do we meet all these 
these needs, right? How do we got to plug these holes and, and fill people in? And I got to do it. I got to go. And uh, it really is just just relying on on the Lord mm-hmm. to meet those needs in His time in His timing. Yeah. Like we yeah. can't be all things, all people. Yeah. Um, there are seasons. Sometimes we say it's it's a it's a who, not how. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, man, it's just that's why you know talk back about the volunteers. It's just so awesome when you can find someone whose passion connects to a, a need mm-hmm. and you plug them in and it's life giving to them. And it's mm-hmm. obviously meets a need of our organization at the same time. And, and, uh, and they're on fire for it. And, and, uh, that's when I think mm-hmm. it just, you know, God shows up when we, mm-hmm. when we rely on him. And so even in those growth times, it can be a most, a most, uh, stretching time in our, in our mm-hmm. faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's a great segue into uh, the next question, which is, I consider all of you pretty passionate people. What, fuels that passion what gets you up in the in the morning to go do what you do every day the hope i see i mean we deal we deal with a lot of icky gross evil darkness mm-hmm. right but that's not what keeps us coming back it's the hope that we see the healing the restoration um we see young mamas become healthy mm-hmm. mamas um, learning how to parent their kids in a healthy way that they've never seen before. Mm. Um, but they come to us in tears and say, I just thank you because I never knew. Mm. I just never knew that that was even a possibility. Mm-hmm. And seeing them get their first job and, mm. and excel at that, seeing them get their driver's license and their, mm. and their, um, their apartment and all of these things, these steps of freedom where they're now living a full life that they thought was never going to happen for them. Mm. Yeah. So that hope. That's and good. it's all because of Jesus. The number yeah. of people making those um, decisions for him and mm-hmm. baptisms, joining churches all around the Tri Cities, mm-hmm. it's that's what keeps us going. Awesome. So, yeah, I think bringing Jesus into places where you don't normally find him or you maybe mm-hmm. don't normally think about him, right? And we do a lot of campus work, obviously sports work, you know, where it's usually about about me and you know, all right, winning and all these things, and and to be able to bring some encouragement, um, particularly to our high school students. Um, that are, you know, they're overwhelmed with life mm-hmm. and school and expectations of, you know, sports teams and parents and, and the whole thing can just it really weigh you down. And so they, they lose their joy. And, and to be able to bring Jesus into that situation and encourage them and, and see kind of either the light bulb go on or just to brighten their day, mm-hmm. right, um, is, is what gets me up in the morning, mm-hmm. keeps me doing it. I think for me, it's it's mission and ministry alignment. Mm-hmm. You know, my wife and I discovered pretty early on that kind of our shared mission was around caring for widows and orphans. And we've done that in a variety of ways mm-hmm. over the years. But one of those ways is through, mm-hmm. you know, through Boys and Girls Club and being able to um, care for modern day widows and mm-hmm. modern day orphans, which look different than 2000 mm-hmm. years ago, but mm-hmm. the, the needs are the same. And so to be able to um, in the midst of, you know, empowering staff and raising money and all that stuff, at the end of the day, it's still mission focused mm-hmm. and it's about caring mm-hmm. for people. If I don't lose sight of that, um, mm-hmm. those days are good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, my passion really comes out of my personal story of mm-hmm. the gospel and meeting Jesus. I grew up living in extreme poverty, which took me to the streets at 15, mm-hmm. where I experienced a life of addiction, mm-hmm. exploitation. Um, incarceration. And so I know that life. I know what it's mm. like. And Jesus set me free in my 20s. And I've just been given so many incredible opportunities and mm. have had so many women walk alongside me throughout these years, helping me heal and helping me get mm. to the place where I am today. So just remembering my personal journey of those years on the streets mm-hmm. and what I experienced and what I saw mm. and just knowing that I don't want women to live Mm -hmm. this way. I want to see them free. I want to see them have good jobs. Mm -hmm. I want to see them rise out of poverty, stand on their own two feet and be able to support themselves and their Mm -hmm. children without having to fall back into those destructive Mm -hmm. patterns. So it's just the grace of God that Mm -hmm. I'm here today. Excellent. Very good. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us here today. Um, Hopefully, friends, you have man, been encouraged and and maybe learned a little bit more about some people who you might see on a Sunday morning, but they are out in our community and they're making a difference and they're right here in our church family. So thank you guys for coming and um, to God be the glory. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.